you join me on a um, gorgeous if not breezy uh, Sunday with a Volkswagen Golf the car I've always thought has been the dullest thing on the planet but I've taken that all back it's not the dullest thing on the planet it's actually an exceptionally good car so believe what others say yeah I'm uh, currently in the Peak District as you can possibly see so I've put quite a few miles on this this particular model is a Volkswagen Golf GT 1.6 TDI 115 PS 7 speed DSG which is automatic to real people um, five door it's got a couple of optional extras it's got normally this would come with 17 inch alloys this has got 18 inch alloys um, what else has it got it's a deep black pearlescent paint which is just black like the other one it gets really dirty um, it's got a rear view camera which is back there somewhere I think it might be in the door handle. I think that might move. Sorry. I think that might move when it goes. And we've got a lovely lot of green lane motorbikes. Sorry about that. Uh, right, back to normal. Um, yeah, because when, when you bang it in reverse and the thing, there's a clunk from the back, a mechanical noise, and I'm not sure what it is unless it's. Do you think that's it? Do you think that? No. Anyway. Um, yeah, so it's got optional 18-inch um, alloys where it would normally come with 17. Uh, and I think that's all on there. And the um, active info display, basically the dash, which is the bee's knees. But anyway, yeah, that's it. It's a nice car. Uh, driving is very good. The DSG gearbox is exceptionally good. Um, DSG is basically, for anyone who doesn't know, is the double clutch gearbox. You'll have to excuse the mess and all my crap in it. It's full cloth trim um, with this sort of fake... I don't need that anymore. This sort of... It's suede, so it's like a fake Alcantara. And this is the grey interior. Um, I think... It, comes with black as normal it's got a drop down and a pass through thingy it's got cup holders in the back I'm not sure about being in the back I've never yeah so it's got a, a pass through for your skis or your snowboard or your dead body if you want to fit a dead body in it um, no sunroof it's got a, a beige roof lining um, so it's two speakers in the back and I think it's got reflectors on the door it's got a nice big rear door um, pocket for losing junk in electric windows your door head of... it's got this it's not carbon it's it's black but it's got like a a pattern on it I'm not sure these might be illuminated as well this has got this has got interior because it's the GT it has interior lighting like mood lighting um so there's a strip along here that lights up and you get a light in the footwell but you have to pay extra for keyless ignition that fucking dangling key ring is what comes as standard um the seats exceptional no complaints whatsoever about the seats absolutely lovely vlua car mats they're manual seats so it's Manual height, it's got a lumber adjust down the bottom. Let's get in it and have a look. <clears throat> Bear with me a second while the gimbal sorts its life out. Right, what do we have in here? It's got an awful lot of accommodation for bits and bobs. So that's the glove box, but the glove box has also got that's where the CD player sits. Um, you've got SD cards, SD card one's currently got navigation in it you've got holders there for an sd slot you've got climate controlled glove box so you can have the heat and that going in there you've got 
a place over there for cards, like credit cards. Bit of a weird place. You've also got over here a little cubby. Again, you might be able to get a set of sunglasses in there. Again, it's got another little SD card slot in there. Well, let's close the door. Um, nice big bin pockets. That's like a uh, one one litre bottle, and that fits in there fine. And it goes right back. Um, there's plenty of space there. You've got all your standards, fully electric, single press down, single press up on all windows, the lock, central lock-in. This is for your mirrors, and this also, it's, it's, sorry, it's left, right mirror adjust. You've got, um, if you can see that, that's the one for bringing the mirrors in. So if you put it to there, when the ignition's on, he says, they would normally come in. There we go. And it has got the option of whenever you switch the ignition off and lock the doors, those come in, which is fine if you want them to break within a couple of weeks. Because I'm constantly locking and opening the doors and stuff like that. Um, and then the last one is just the heated for the heated moves, which is a bit weird. I would have thought that. Would have been integrated with um, like your standard rear D mister. So that's the 12 inch um, LCD dash. So you've got that, or you've got the conventional ones. If you get this as an option, it is absolutely brilliant. But it gets to a point where the information that's on it can get too confusing. There's, there can be so much info on there, it's unbelievable. Um, but yeah. You've got like a SOS button, you've got, which is what I like, sunglasses holder in there, which is like rubberized. Um, you've got light, which is activated by the door, so you see, so you just pull it and you've got the light. The airbag deactivation thing is on the side around the corner. Um, same with this. Light activated, you've also got a clip there for documents. So, um, the central dash, you've got the infotainment type center, um, sorry, system. You've got a conventional air conditioning. Um, again, this has got the DSG gearbox. It's got the cup holders in the wrong place. No, they're not too bad. I've got this um, 16 ounce cup and it's there, okay? Because this is an automatic, it's brilliant because you set it in gear and you hardly ever touch it. But if that was a gear stick, that would just constantly be in the way. I'm, I, I presume those cup holders are in the same place on the manual. On the automatic they work, but on a manual, that would just get in the way. They're good cup holders though. Uh, and you've also got the 12 socket, sorry, the 12 volt socket, the auto hold. I think you get that with the automatic and basically it just holds you on the heel so you don't have to keep the brake pressed. Um, it's a bit like putting the handbrake on automatically. And then you've got the electric handbrake button there. You've got your mode, which is like sport economic mode. You've got the auto start stop on off. There we me, gimbal's gone a bit mad. That's better. You've got your standard box, so you've got park. Um, Reverse, neutral, DS. So normal would be drive, put it back, you go into S, which is the sport mode. You get the indicator on there, so that would be an S. Pull it again, you've got drive, and you can if you really want, and then when you're in the sport, you can also operate it with the paddles because you've got the flippy paddles there and there, which are just on the, or you can shift this over and use this as like an up and a down. And it comes up as M. So when that goes over it's drive, sport, etc. Neutral, park. Okay. Um, yeah, this dash, you can do almost anything with it. Um, you've got a button here, so where you can, you press the view button, and then the view will let you tell you what you want in the middle. So you can go up, sorry, uh, it tells you what you have over here. 
so you can have the efficiency so it will change the efficiency to the middle of the dials so that just tells you how good you're driving um, so at the moment I've got it on nav so you can have consumption and range pop up press view again got gear and speed classic which is just the standard dials got driver assistance so that's how long you've been driving that I like that it puts the navigate it puts your turn signal you put your turning navigation warnings up here so it says left right backwards forwards etc um, what you've also got you've got these two silver buttons and these will scroll what's displayed in the center so you can go to the audio so if there was audio playing it would tell you what info on there You've got telephone what it's connected to vehicle status you can go in and that will show you different parts um, about the vehicle like the oil the temp and all that lot you've got range assistance menu so the ACC is uh, that's where it gets really confusing and I think too much information can be displayed because it lets you know the distance in front of the car to the vehicle and behind and what's on the side and when you've got all these things going off and it, it doesn't take much it takes like braking or dropping back or whatever to disengage it um, so I find that a little bit and you just go back to navigation you've got manual trip reset down the bottom uh, total mileage, trip distance on the left, standard rev gauge and a standard speed gauge. Everything's changeable in the menus. Um, so this is a standard menu. Sorry about it all being all shiny. And this is all piano black, which um, as you may know, I absolutely hate. So you've got all your radio stations. AF off, so you can scroll. So you've got 18 uh, presets that you can have on there. It's really reflective really shiny um, media so you can select go Bluetooth audio SD card auxiliary standard phone I'm not sure if this is Android based or not but it hasn't crashed voice so you can activate the voice control by means of an activation key please contact your dealer so we haven't got it um, we've got nav the phone sitting up here is on a, a magnet base that I've put in there uh, little devices that you put in the air vents um, so this gives you your navigation when it's not on the screen. You can change where you have the map, where you have the map down there. So it takes the map away from there. And also this is sensitive. So at the moment you've got the buttons and then it goes back to a full screen. As you approach, you don't even have to touch it. It pulls up and you can go into the settings. So you've got all your navigation options, nav announcements, manage the memory speed. Navigation is pretty good in this. It's, it's not bad. Um, Again, it doesn't show the uh, actual speed that you're going. Car, so you've got a car, and you've got settings again. ECS, what the tyres are doing. Let's have a quick look on there. Oh, no, I think I may have gone to the wrong one. Tire pressure, loss indicator, speed warning. I mean, you've got winter tyres that have got a limited um, speed on them. Light, so you've got... Switch on time early, which basically means your automatic headlights, when you want them switching on. Uh, headlight range control, so that's, normally you'd have on other models, you have a button that sits here, you know where you've got your height adjust. Um, that's basically what that is. So the range is like you're up or you're down. Uh, automatic headlight control in rain, so when it starts to rain, you want to put the lights on. Uh, convenience turn signal. So we look what that says. Sorry. Don't know what convenience turn signal is. It's all in the manual. There's a big manual for this. So you've got instrument switch lighting, which is all your background. Oh, it's all backlit in white. So all of these are backlit in white, which is really nice. Um, you've got footwell lightning, door background lightning. Because as I say, on this sort of lighting, because on this, that sort of lights up, which is a nice touch. Uh, I know people, I know I've always said that Volkswagen Golf is a boring car. It, it's it's very very good um i really like this car and being it being this dsg automatic gearbox i haven't driven an automatic for years and this is an absolute dream to drive because you just bang it into drive and 
it makes it seamless. I've, 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 when I have driven old automatics, they've been like and lurchy and not very good. But this DSG double clutch gearbox is the bomb. Um, so media source. So you got your CD, SD card two, because um, SD card one has got the nav in. You got the BT uh, Bluetooth audio. Wireless LAN, so you can connect wirelessly to it. You've got the auxiliary, which is the socket down here. So you've got a USB in there. And then there's a phone no adapter. And this is a, a closable compartment. And it will fit a full-size um, smartphone in there, which is brilliant. So, And it will close as well, which is great. You've got everything on this. Everything that's available, you've got apps so you can connect it with your phone. You've got Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and Mirror Link. Uh, the Android Auto is proprietary to about half a dozen manufacturers, Volkswagen being one of them. The Mirror Link is uh, open source and it's what a lot of the other manufacturers have got. And then you've got Apple CarPlay, which is a, an Apple thing. It also displays stuff around the top, you've got current time. So you've got current time, time to destination, what the Bluetooth's doing, what your phone is, what the outside temp is. There's so much information displayed between there and there, it can get a bit distracting at times. So sometimes you have to sort of switch stuff off and minimise it. Um, how do we get into... Yes, yes, shut up. I know the ignition's on. Okay, right, so it's... A handle. Oh, back out into the wind. This is where the older gimbal's going to struggle. Sorry about the wind. Have we got it? Yeah. Gas struts! Yay! We've got gas struts! And we have an engine! Plastic cover on it. Let's pull the cover off so you can see all the gubbins. And there it is. Is it three cylinder? Oh no, no, it's four cylinder. Look at all that shininess. Look at, look at that. Oh, he's got a little cloth bag. Oh, isn't that nice? Turbo's out the back, I think. Yeah, I presume that's the turbo. All the exhaust gubbins. This engine is, uses AdBlue. So if we go round to the fuel filler flap, if you don't know what AdBlue is, AdBlue. It's basically a clear liquid that contains a special cocktail of chemicals. And what it does, I think it gets injected into the exhaust, but either before or after the catalytic converter, and basically it just lowers your emissions, so you get less... I'm not sure whether it's carbon monoxide or whatever, you get less of the nasties um, in your emissions. Um, so we've got... Expansion, uh, brake, fuel, is that a fuel filter or an oil filter? Not sure what that is, some sort of scavenger filter with three pipes going on it. Uh, battery, air box, uh, fluid reservoir. Take it, that's the standard ECU, and then the fuse box to the right of it. Mass airflow sensor and air intake with the turbo sitting out the back. It's very, uh, it's very tight in there, considering it's a relatively small engine. Got all your Akatung baby and warning. Let's see if I can get this back on without breaking it. Is it just a... Yeah, that'd do. And it's your typical Volkswagen Golf turbo diesel injection. Um, yeah, single gas strut on this one. And then it's got the... Washer jets. I think what this system does is when you press the washer jets, it sort of you hear it, and it takes a while before the water comes out. So you think, what's going on? Why does it keep? But what I think it does is it drains the water back down out of the system so that it doesn't freeze. That's what I'm thinking. So that's basically, it's also got additional, it's got, I'm not sure I think these are standard, it's got uh, helpful cornering lights, so that when you're driving and the lights are on, and you go around a corner, it sort of points the fog lights, 
in the direction you're about to turn. This thing is black and it's very dirty. This thing's only done what, four, four or five thousand miles? And whoever has had it before me, Jesus Christ. Dunlop Sport Max RT, um, and I'm not sure whether it's just the Golf or whether it's those tyres. But I don't think very much of it because on the Cat and Fiddle, if you know, come on, let's get back in uh, at this breeze. Um, on the Cat and Fiddle, and that's not Cockney rhyming slang for anything. Um, yeah, on the Cat and Fiddle Road, um, I was going. I wasn't going a tad fast. I was. I was. I was pushing it, not massively. I was just up in the pace. And I got to this one particular corner, and it decided it wanted to. I. 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 Um, weighted up the suspension, so I was. Co I was on a constant suspension press pressure going through this corner. The corner tightened, so I then just applied a bit more. And as soon as I applied a bit more, all four wheels, all four tyres broke away, and I had like a, a four wheel skid, which was a bit disconcerting. I've never ever, I think I think I might have had one skid on the one series. I've had a one series for the last eight years, um, and they've handled like a dream. And I've really pushed them, and I've tried to find their breaking point, um, whereas in it starts to skid and lose it, and I've not found it. I'm not sure whether it's the um, DSC that's involved or the traction control, whatever it's got on there, but that thing sticks like proverbial to a blanket, where this, mm, not as brilliant. But generally, the ride, ride is absolutely lovely. It's it, it It's got good feedback. You do know what the roads do when you're riding over it. It doesn't doesn't totally detach you from the driving experience. Um, keeps you in tune with what the roads doing, but it just handles them really well. Considering these are 18 inch alloys with uh, low profile tires, I don't think they're run flats because I know run flats can make the ride even harder, um, which is what BMW use on their sporty ones. And I've heard that. Well, I know from previous that the sort of M Sport BMWs with 17, 18 inch alloys with run flats on them. You don't hit a bump, you crash a bump. Um, and that can be a bit teeth jar in it, rattles your fillings out. But no, um, Volkswagen Golf, I really like this car. I would recommend it to absolutely anyone. I think the Volkswagen Golf is still, it's got to be the longest naming of a car. Because like Ford, the Escort, and then the Focus, um, Cortina, the Sierra, the Mondeo, etc. will change. But the Golf, it's been around for as long as I think I have. I'm not sure when the first one came out. 70s, 80s, but it's been a legend. And I've always sort of thought, oh, they're dull and boring. Well, to most people, they are. But when you get to a certain age, in my in my prime years, um, I'm currently sort of mid-late 40s, the DSG I absolutely love. Everyone says, oh, it takes away from the driving experience. It can do, yeah, if you're a, a track day racer or anything like that, or you're absolutely ragged it everywhere you go. Um, but then once the years start getting on, you just want comfort. You just want to do two, three hundred mile in a day. And this, this has got to be one of the most comfortable cars. I did, coming up here, I did 200 and something miles because I stayed just south of Manchester. So it was Harlow in Essex up to Manchester. Um... And when I got out of this, I was expecting, oh God, here we go, the old back's going to have seized. But it was like I hadn't been driving. It was an absolute godsend. It was, oh, the seats are amazing. Um, so yeah, it gets a thumbs up in everything apart from the handling. Um, and the dash layout can be a little bit too distracting with so much options. Um, go out and buy a Golf. You have my endorsement. Bye.